Coming up on Koshy's Business Builders, why being purpose-driven matters. The Aussie business giving ugly fruit and veg a place on our tables, plus how Linktree can help you grow your followers. G'day and welcome to another episode of Koshy's Business Builders where we take a look at the issues facing small business owners and come up with practical advice and tips to help them succeed. Joining me today as co-host is Koshy's Business Builders editor, Sess Busby. Now, Sess has been at the reins of KBB for the last five years, so she knows all the pain points of our small business community. Plus, she also understands firsthand what it takes to start a successful brand. She was the founding editor of one of Sydney's most popular street press magazines, The Brag. 20 years later, that brand still exists, so I'm keen to pick her brain on how to keep customers coming back for more. Sess, thanks for joining us today. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, Dave. Customer loyalty, it's huge, isn't it? How do we achieve it? That's the million dollar question, I think, Dave. Everyone wants to know that. But I think it probably comes down to one thing, and that's customer experience. You want to really go above and beyond for your customers. Small businesses have daily interactions with their customers. They're at the coalface oftentimes. Every time there is a personal interaction with a customer, it's another opportunity to learn about them, to see how you can better service them what they want, what they need, and that will help grow their loyalty and grow your business. Christmas was a mixed bag for a lot of businesses. A lot were saying it was a cracking December, then the official retail sales figures come out, down more than expected. So the economy's really spotty at the moment. How do you keep momentum going in your business, particularly with all this uncertainty? Well, again, I think it comes down to ex customer experience and growing that customer loyalty, and I think those sales seasons are a really good opportunity for businesses to grow. So by capitalising on that, by nurturing those new customers, they can become repeat customers. Consumer sentiment's down, there's fear of more interest rate rises, economy slowing. This is a chance to say to your customers, isn't it? Hey, we're here to help you. We'll always give you great value but also great service as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sess, I'm keen to hear your thoughts on our next business. LV Jewels is a family-run operation that has been making personalised jewellery for a number of years. Husband and wife team, John and Nicole Ullo, have a stack of loyal customers at their QVB store, but like all bricks and mortar retailers, they faced disruption during the pandemic. To save the business, they made a pivot to online. Sales skyrocketed. Now that things have settled down, the couple have some hard choices to make. Says, what do you reckon? Should they pivot back to their bricks and mortar business or is this a chance to make both thrive? I think it's the latter, Dave. The businesses that seem to be doing well at the moment are the ones that are really merging that physical and digital element. So a lot of businesses that never would have thought of going online because of the pandemic, they made that leap and they've had great results. After all those lockdown periods, people were really hungry to get into stores, to physical stores and, you know, have that touch and feel and that interaction with the salesperson. So I think it's kind of a mix of both. Thanks, there's some really great advice there. Now, to find out what John and Nicole should do next, a few weeks ago, we sent in KBB expert Jane Kay to help the couple realign their business for success. Now she's back to catch up with them again to see how they're going both at their store and online. Coming. Mwah. Thank you. This is my store. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. So it all happens here. It does. So yeah. literally, I can fall in love with something here. Yeah. And then I can walk away with that. Absolutely. In within, yeah, within 10 minutes. So this is our little gorgeous gift bag, and it comes in the gift box. So this one is one of your best sellers, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the initial piece. So okay. it's just really simple. An initial, we can do an initial on the front, initial on the back. Yes. Um, and we've grown that range to have earrings. We've had double initials, a necklace, a ring. We've got the bracelet, the necklace. So it's yeah. a really easy piece. 
Now that Jane has seen how Nicole manages the LV Jewels store, she's headed back to their office to check in with John. So John, since we last got together, I was lucky enough to visit Nicole in your beautiful, yes, Q yes, your beautiful and tiny, tiny QVB. Small. What did you think of it? I was amazed at actually how much traffic was going past yeah. now, but Nicole actually told me that that was compared to what is normal, it's still just a trickle, really. With COVID, there's been a lot of people still working from home, as, yes. as you are aware. So we are in a high traffic area, which yeah. is great, which is why I love being in there. And it's like a prestigious place to be, the Queen Victoria building. I love the signage and the mm -hmm. way that you were, you know, as you're walking past, you can really see, it pops out and says, we do engraving, personalise me, and talks to your customer they're walking past, so it creates that curiosity and draws people in. I, I noticed it drawing people in. Yeah, well, that's what we're all about, basically, the personalisation, and people love that we do it in store. People still can't believe they can just wait a few minutes and take it home with them. Yeah, so while we're talking about customers, yeah. let's just dig a little bit deeper, because last time we spoke, you were going to go away and find out a little bit more, ask your customers yes. um, some questions. How have you gone with that? Yeah, so we conducted a survey. We went out to all our customers and we got a great response back. And we found um, a few things that we sort of knew yeah. and some things that were, you know, uh, I guess uh, a surprise. Excellent. So, I mean, most of all, we found out that the customers love LV brand, like they love us. Yeah. They love the affordability yes. and the quality of the jewellery. So as you know, like our, our material is slightly different to sort of what you may find elsewhere. We use a lot of stainless steel and that is very strong material, very hard wearing, doesn't tarnish or anything. We found customers love that. Still looks great. We also asked the question about with, would the customers pay for the shipping or mm -hmm. pay for extra for a gift packaging and so forth. So most of the customers were open to paying extra for extra services, but with the gift box, they, there was a good, uh, I sensed they expected to come the in a box. The expectation, yes. Okay, yeah, well that's yeah. really interesting. That's good insights, mm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Do you know Koshi's Business Builders has a website? It's a great place to find all the latest business news, advice and tips to succeed. Check it out now at www.koshysbusinessbuilders.com.au and get your fix of small business inspiration. Now we're joined in studio by Katrina McCarter, who's here to help unpack the latest research which suggests play should be part of your every day. Katrina, you're a great fan of this, but what do we mean by play? Yeah, look, it's a really, really good question. What we're talking about is doing something that brings you happiness and joy, but it's not tied to getting a goal or an objective. It's something that you do for the love of it and for the sheer enjoyment and pleasure. How do you play if you're a business owner? I would say it's all about making time for play. Because most business owners, if you ask them, you know, I want you to go off and spend some time playing, they'd say, when am I going to fit, fit that in? And I would actually say that you need to schedule time in for play, just like you might a business meeting. So how does play differ from sort of relaxing or just having a bit of downtime? As I said, it's something that you do for sheer love and it has no responsibility attached to it is probably the key thing. And it comes back to my, I bang on about this all the time, you as a business owner are the most important asset in your business. Absolutely, it's about mental health. I'm actually involved, I've collaborated with a number of other small business leaders in Australia right now. We're undertaking a study of small business owners and one of the areas that we're looking at is actually their mental health. And the early results, we've only you know just launched this out to market, is that a lot of um, small business owners over the last two years have experienced poor mental health. Um, increasing your play really looks after your mental and physical wellbeing. It can be a winning strategy for business. Yep. Katrina, you've motivated us all. Thank you for your insights on that. Really appreciate it. Next up, tech whiz Tracy Sheen gives us the lowdown on how to use Linktree to leverage your content on socials. G'day folks, Tracy Sheen, The Digital Guide, back with another tech tip. This week we're talking Linktree. What it does is it allows you to create all of your contact information on one page. 
Now you see this a lot, particularly with people's Instagram profiles where you might see link in bio. What that's doing is allowing people to go to one site and find everything they need to know about you on the one site. So with Linktree, you can put your social media profiles, so Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, WeChat, wherever else you're using, along with your website, along with any particular offers around products or services that you might have coming up. Also, create a QR code off the back of it, and if you're at a networking event, just let people scan your QR code, they go straight to your Linktree and they have everything they need to know about you in one spot. Really handy tip. Check it out, Linktree, other platforms just like it, and I'll be back with you shortly with another tech tip. Do you know what it takes to build a successful brand? Our first act podcast shares the origin tales and inspirational stories of Australia's most innovative entrepreneurs. Hosted by Koshy's Business Builders editors, Seth Busby and Adam Bubb, these frank conversations take a deep dive into the genesis of success. It's a must listen for business owners. Hi, I'm Rich Torino and I'm a co-founder here at Good and Fugly. My dad was a really passionate gardener. I grew up with fruit and veg growing in our front and backyards. He would grow corn and lettuce and everything. We also had a kind of mango tree and you know, some fig, fig trees and things as well. Here at Good and Fugly, we curate seasonal boxes of uh, gorgeous fruit and veg that's a little bit wonky. So up to 25% of produce never leaves a farm because it's not pretty enough for supermarkets. We buy that from farmers that would otherwise go to waste even though it's super fresh. We curate it into kind of really useful fruit and veg boxes for our customers and we ship it to them every day. I used to work at Go Get Car Share. I was there for about 12 years and left just as the pandemic hit. Um, I was looking around at what I was going to do next and around that time I found out about this stat that 25% of produce never leaves the farm because it's not pretty enough and also found that 30% of produce grown across the world is either wasted or lost. I thought maybe this is something I could get my teeth into and I looked around and it's actually being done overseas in the US and, and the UK. It wasn't being done here so I thought I'd give it a go and see if there's any demand and we've been kind of blown away. There are a lot of fruit and veg boxes out there and our point of difference is that we're rescuing this produce. Obviously the cost of living has been uh, spiking uh, recently um, you know, for many reasons but especially for the floods. The farmers we work with have been hit uh, by floods like four times in the last 18 months, uh, which is terrible. And our box is around kind of 20% uh, more affordable than uh, the supermarkets at the moment. Some of the supermarkets sell Imperfects, a small range of Imperfects um, that they discount really heavily. Our mission is to change people's behaviour um, and to eventually have Fuglies and normal produce all being sold together for the same price. The ongoing challenges is logistics. You know, I talked about the, the idea with, with friends of mine and they were like, you know what, you're not in the fruit and veg game, you're in the logistics game. And so that's always, again, a learning curve, uh, but we're getting better and better at it all the time. Commercial viability is really important in a sustainable business to actually have impact. Um, if something isn't as, as convenient or as affordable as the alternative, then no, not many people are going to change. We deliver to all of Greater Sydney. We've and we've just um, launched into in Victoria as well, um, and we plan to be across the country over the next 12 months. So we're committed to um, turning Good and Fugly into a national brand, and we've kind of recently been through a crowd fund, so we now have some funds that we're going to be able to, to use to, to expand rapidly. The advice that I'd have for young entrepreneurs is just do it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You make it better as you go. I've spent a long time wanting to set my own thing up, and my partner, when I spoke to her about this, she was like, you know what, just do it. She just wanted me to do one. And if you fail, you fail, but just go for it. Hi, I'm Rani Khan, founder and CEO here at Oz Harvest. I believe that every single one of us has the ability to find our purpose, that true meaning for which we have been put on this earth. And we find it by doing the things that we love, by doing the things that make a difference to every single person around us. 
I know from my very own life how purpose and passion drive every single thing that I do and the reason that I get up every morning. And what I also know is that people aren't sure where to find their purpose. They think it's over there or they look over there. But I believe every one of us has to look in the mirror because that's where we find what it is that brings us joy and what it is that we are meant to be doing that not only makes us get up in the morning, but makes a difference to those around us. Now, earlier in this episode, Jane paid a visit to Nicole at LV Jewels to see how daily operations were carried out. Now Jane is going over the results of a recent customer survey with John to see what their clients really think of their business. What needs to change for John and Nicole to take LV to the next level? So what else did you learn? We also asked them about shopping in store or shopping online. Uh -huh. Because as you know, our lease is coming up in, in the next 12 months. Yes. And um, it's a big overhead having a physical location. Yes. We didn't really get a clear indication, like customers were sort of open to shopping in store and some were preferred shopping. It was very split. And then so, some were obviously open to both. Yes. I do love having a store in the Queen Victoria building. Like there's a certain, I don't guess, it is prestige to it. But it's got to make sense, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, the numbers, like, it can't the be just numbers have, it looks nice. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's got to stand up on its own two feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it absolutely does. But it, it sounds like it, it just might. And maybe when we get to the bottom of the numbers, we might find that the store is a really important element. Yeah. Um, it's certainly for someone like us, even though now 95% of our business is online and 5% is in store, it's such an important element for us to understand our customers, understand our customers needs. She walks in, she tells us all about her life and what's going on and how we become part of her wardrobe solution. And I think for you, the, her gifting solution, there is so much gold in the interactions and in the learnings that you're having on the floor. And if you're continually evolving your product, it's great to be with your customers experiencing your product, which helps you then um, know which direction to go and, and, and you know, find that temperature check, if you like, with yeah, your customers. Yeah, yeah. And what about product? What did they tell you about okay, the Okay, so there was a clear, clear um, uh, feedback from the customers that we need to increase our product range. Okay, so, so variety. Um, definitely, we need some new styles, some new designs. Um, it could just mean that we need to offer more different styles of engraving or maybe some whole different pieces. I mean, that's also, again, something that we need to look into and maybe we need to check the numbers on which ones are selling the most and maybe <laughs> offer more, more This is where you that. can get creative, I think, John. <laughs> this is about freshness. Girls love the new thing. Um, so, it, yeah, it is really exciting. As someone who's in fashion, you know, bringing out new ranges all the time, keeps customers interested, keeps them coming back to find out what's new, what's coming out. One of the things we talked about, and if you agree, I'm, I'm happy to share a template for a cash flow budget. Um, okay. And it yeah. would be great to get, to really understand the numbers sitting in behind the store and the online. So you, are you prepared to take a spreadsheet and get dirty with it? Yes, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. So I'm going to leave you with that. And are you happy to, to jump in with the spreadsheet and do your darndest? Absolutely. Then the other thing, obviously, the, the big decision you're making around whether you stay where you are, what would be the alternatives? Would it okay. be to go into the suburbs? Because maybe that has shopping changed. It's, it's, you know, where are your competitors? Where are they placed? What, and probably just a pros and cons list. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. That's really inspiring. I'm definitely going to think about that. Awesome. Thanks, John. Thanks, Can't wait Jane. to meet with you again. Well, it certainly looks like John and Nicole have had some great feedback from their customers that will help them make plans for their future. And, Cess, it is just so important for business owners, isn't it, to, to sort of temperature check their clients on a regular basis. Oh, absolutely. Feedback is so important. Feedback to feed forward, that's what the kind of the saying is. And customer feedback will give you what's right and what's wrong in your business and what you can do to improve moving forward. Cess, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Now, back to work on the website at Koshi's Business Builder. Love what you do. Now, remember, if you're looking for small business tips or the latest news and expert advice, then you can find it through Cess online at koshysbusinessbuilders.com.au or follow Koshy's Biz on Facebook, LinkedIn, Insta and Twitter. See you next week.
next week on Koshy's Business Builders, retail tips from a dead set legend. The tech platform that is helping hospitality businesses save money, plus how you can retain staff and avoid the skill shortage.